Hello! Welcome to the Twitch stream today. Um, so I'm Emily Schmidt. Welcome to my home studio. Um, I work in the preservation department at the libraries and um, hi, hello, I see you in the chat. Um, yeah, so I work in the preservation department, which is um, what we do is we take care of the physical um, books and other things that we have in our collection at the library. So we do a lot of um, uh, bookbinding, rebinding, repair of, of books there. And I also have um, an Etsy shop. So luckily I'm set up at home to do bookbinding, which is great during a pandemic when you have to work at home. And uh, that's, that's what I'm doing now. So today um, we are gonna make, let me switch you down here so you can see what we're gonna make. Today we are gonna make a photo album. So this is a pretty simple, the binding of this is pretty simple. Um, so you can see this is the photo album that we're gonna make. Hey, there's Hunt in the snow. Um, and there's the HL in the snow. Um, so this is something that I make for my Etsy shop. It's also in Hunt. Um, I was pretty obsessed with Hunt when it opened, so I took a lot of pictures of it. Um, so what we're going to do is this is actually fabric that, um, that I have backed with tissue to turn it into book cloth. Um, so some traditional book cloths that you could use to, um, I have some here to cover books with. Um, they are sort of sealed, the weave, let's get that to focus, the weave of, um, of that cloth is sort of sealed. So when you put glue on it, it doesn't um, ooze through. Um, but those uh, traditional book cloths come in a lot of solid colors that are kind of boring. And, um, Hi hey everybody in the chat. I see you all welcoming each other. And oh yes, wanting snow. I wish I wish it could. If we're gonna have it be this cold and rainy, can we at least have the snow to go with it? Um, so, um, right. So back to this boring solid colors. So I wanted to make prettier things, but if you just take regular fabric and glue it to a board, that glue is gonna come through the weave of that fabric. So what we're gonna do is um, first, here's an example. Here's some fabric, but I've backed it. I don't know if you can tell. It's got tissue on the back and it's just an iron-on product. We're gonna go through all of that today. Um, we'll make our own book cloth and then um, we will cover the boards and then we will sew in the pages. Um, so the pages are just, um, let's see, drawing paper. And um, then I use a photo corner, if I can get that to focus, just some self-adhesive photo corners to, to stick those on. Um, so um, those, and those come on a separate sheet. So like here's a sheet of clear photo corners. Some cat hair for you on there. And or you can get some white ones. You can also get black ones or um, craft paper colored ones. Um, so that's how we're, we will actually um, adhere the photos to the paper. Um, so the size that we're gonna make today is a five inch square, which is great for a four inch print, which is what this is. Um, it leaves you a half inch um, border around, which gives you space to put your photo corners on. Um, this is also a great size for Instax prints. Right, so if this is an Instax wide, that would fit great in there. Um, you could also have some minis that you could put two to a page in there if you wanted to. Um, and of course, you could make this any size you want. So I also have a size that is a six and a half inch square, which is big enough for a four by six. Um, yeah, these are all pictures that I've taken, thank you. That is a, another hobby of mine. <laughs> oh, these ones are not, I did not take these. Uh, my friend and coworker Jamie Bradway took these, but all of the rest of them I took. Um, 
So this, uh, as I was saying, could do four by six in either direction. Um, and of course, it doesn't have to be a square if you wanted to make it, you know, long and skinny and have multiple um, pictures per page. You could do that or you could, you know, if you wanted it to be like just you could put five of these to a page or something, but you would just need to think about how much space you need around um, each picture and then plan from there. Um, I would say that you need that it would be good to have at least a half inch or a quarter inch. Hey, Jamie, you are famous. Those are your pictures. Um, uh, around the edge like this has that half inch. I would think you would need at least that. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah, so that's sort of the plan for um, the size of this. So what else should I tell you before we get going? Um, if you want to make exactly what we're making today, I went ahead and put all the dimensions of all of the things that we're going to need. So if you're live, you could maybe screenshot that real fast. If you're watching the replay, you could also screenshot it or just pause and write down what you need to do. Um, but so this is what we're going to do. And I will show you all of those pieces now. So we're going to have 18 sheets of drawing paper. And what I use for that is uh, the Strathmore drawing paper, the recycled um, drawing paper. It works really great, the 400 series. Um, it's got a good thickness to it. Um, and so I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I haven't said this yet. Um, I'm going to make an album that is, that holds 36 prints. And you may notice that all of the pictures are, that's my nephew, Sam, um, and my nephew, Evan, just to give them both equal time. Um, the pictures are only on one side of the page. And that's because I don't have any interleaving or plastic sleeve going around. Uh, the photos. So if I were to put them on both sides of this page, over time, those emulsion layers um, could end up sticking to each other. So for what we're doing today, I'm just going to put pictures on one side of the page. Um, so I have 18 pieces of paper, which I'm going to fold in half, which will double the amount of pages that I have. Um, so I've got 18 of those. So that's five inches by 10, because we fold it in half, it'll become five by five. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna make this later, or next, but here's my book cloth um, that is um, six and a quarter by 13 and a quarter. Um, and then I have a separate smaller piece um, that is four and three quarters by three inches. And that piece is gonna be this bridge let me see if I have one. There's one that I haven't sewn into yet. That's going to be this bridge that covers between. Um, and uh, good question. Acid-free stuff. Um, I am using all acid-free things. Um, so the this is just cotton fabric, and then I'm backing it with an acid-free tissue paper. So most of the tissue paper that you use to wrap presents is not acid free. Um, but if you don't need this to last for centuries, maybe you don't care about that. If you just want to try your hand at it, grab what you have lying around. Um, if you want acid free, you can, you can find that on Amazon um, if you just search it. Or um, the container store actually has acid free tissue, which they use to um, house clothing that you want to keep, you know, like a wedding dress or something in a box. So they have an acid free tissue there. And then I'm also going to be using this binders board, which is acid free. And this is a pretty specific product. You can get it at Talas online, T-A-L-A-S online, or um, hollanders.com has, has this as well. You could also get it at, I believe, Jerry's Artorama in town has some smaller sheets um, that you can buy there. So um, uh, it comes in different thicknesses. I'm use the, using the 80 board. So that's 
0.080, I believe, is how they have it listed. Um, and uh, I am lucky enough to work at a place that has, hey, there's the links, thank you. Um, I work at a place where uh, we have a, a board cutter, so I can cut these at work, but you can also um, cut this by hand if you have, you know, a box cutter or a utility knife. Um, isn't Jerry's great? I could get lost in there for hours. Not lately, but <laughs> in the before times. Um, so yeah, you could easily, if you had a straight edge, you know, measure what you need to do. And then my advice would be to cut this in light strokes. Don't try to cut it all at once. Just do layers, slight layers. And try not to apply too much pressure because you can see what's in danger here <laughs> are your fingers. Um, and I have been the victim of such an accident, um, which is why I now have <laughs> a safety ruler that will hide your, your precious fingers behind there um, to cut. So, oh, I actually did start cutting that. I didn't need to. Um, okay, so that's our binders board. We have three pieces for that. Let me get this showing again. Um, so this is five and an eighth square, which is um, just a little bit bigger than the, the paper that we're using. So we're going to have a little bit of an edge around there. You can see that here. <laughs> so many cool tools, I know. It's endless, right? You start doing stuff, you need all the stuff. <laughs> um, okay, and then I've got some, this is just some cardstock, um, which I use Nina, N-E-E-N-A, uh, but it can really just be any kind of thick, thicker paper um, that you have, and I've cut that to five by five as well. So those are all of the things that we're gonna need. I just wanted to show you that ahead of time before we start making. Let me do one more um, explanation before we start making, and that is thinking about how big this spine piece needs to be. Again, if you just want to do what I'm doing, 3.6 centimeters. Sorry to mix inches and centimeters, but it really just made more sense to measure this in centimeters. Um, so what I have found is, you may notice that this is in a wedge shape. It's the same concept as a 3D binder. Um, 3D binder? Three ring binder. <laughs> um, so it's in a wedge shape so that when you start adding the thickness of the photos that you put in there, it's going to have enough space to hold them. So you can see this one that is full. It has enough space for those photos. So you have to take into account this, the thickness of the paper and the thickness of the photos. And what I have found is that what you, let me think, what am I trying to say? So for ours, we're gonna do six sections. So we're gonna split those 18 sheets of paper into six sections. So there's gonna be three sheets per section, which means that there will be six photos per section. And what I found is that for that, um, that thickness is about 0.6 centimeters, if I can get that to focus. So we're going to split that spine piece evenly to hold um, these sections. And we'll get to this a little bit later when we actually punch them, but I just wanted to tell you how I calculated the thickness of this spine piece. Um, so that's why it is 3.6. So I have six sections times 0.6 each, 3.6. Um, okay, so that's all the boring explanation part. Let's make something. Um, and we're gonna start by making the book cloth. So let me clear out my space here a little bit. Okay, so I've got my fabric that I'm going to use. 
and I'm going to bring up a, an ironing board here. Oh, math. <laughs> yeah, I sort of hated to, to mention it, but it does, you do need a little bit of precision to make this work. So, um, you know, they told you you'd use it one day. Today we're using the math. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my iron so it's getting hot while I talk to you. Okay, so I've got an ironing board here that I made myself, um, and I made it the size of a fat quarter. Um, if you don't know what a fat quarter is, um, it is a, this is a fat quarter. Oops. So it's a, it's the same amount of fabric that's in a quarter yard of fabric. But if you were to cut a quarter yard of fabric, it would be nine inches by 44 inches. And that's not really a usable uh, piece of fabric. So what they did is they just cut that long piece in half and put, the, put it on top of each other. So now we have 22 inches by 18 inches. Um, so you have a much more usable piece of fabric. Um, this fabric is actually a fabric that I designed and had printed at Spoonflower because I keep imagining that one day I will have my own designed fabric to use for these. Um, I actually forgot about this, this fabric and I was quite pleased with it when I pulled it out of the drawer, but this is what we're going to use today. So I've got my fabric and then I've got a piece of heat and bond light. And what this is, it's a, um, it is a, an adhesive that we're going to use an iron, um, an iron on adhesive. Um, <laughs> you can try to be me if you want to. I don't know if that's really advisable, but um, thank you. I'm glad that you like the fabric. Um, let's see. Okay, so heat and bond light. Um, I'm going to show you this box too with all the information. There is a very similar product called um, interfacing. I think it's heat and bond interfacing and that's not what you want. You want the iron on adhesive. Um, I use a ton of this so I order it in 75 yard boxes but you obviously don't need that much and you can get this on Amazon or at Walmart um, and I think it comes in like three or five yards, something much more manageable. Um, so I have cut that down to be, I want it to be a little bit less wide and less tall than my fabric. I know you can't see all of it here. Um, and it actually is going to be a little bit less than my print as well. Sorry for the focus issues. It, it has a little bit of trouble, I think, focusing when there's all white on here. So I'll try to get through this part quickly. Um, but I want you to see that the heat and bond does not extend over the fabric onto your ironing board because when you iron the stuff it, it, and it's touching your iron board, ironing board, it will stick to that and um, it will make a mess that will make you unhappy for a long time. <laughs> so um, yeah, cut that a little bit smaller. And then I have a piece of that acid-free tissue that I was talking about and I have that cut to a little bit bigger than my heat and bond, um, which is fine. We could end, so this doesn't have to be as exact and we're gonna cut that down later. Hey, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this first layer first. The heat and bond layer first. So I've got my iron and I've got it in position where I want it and I'm just gonna start ironing it to um, attach. And I have my iron on high. I have it all the way turned up to the linen cotton setting. I, it's been a long time since I've looked at the heat and bond instructions, but from what I remember, they do not advise you to do that, but um, this is what works for me, so I guess I'm just a rebel and I do what works. Um, so yeah, so I'm just ironing until, you probably can't see this on camera or get a sense of it, but you can sort of get a sense of when it is attaching. You can sort of see the pattern a little bit better through what I haven't um, ironed yet. 
so you can sort of feel when it grips um, the <laughs> when it grips the the cotton yes I am a rebel ironer proud proud to be I guess <laughs> I didn't know I was so proud until I said it but yes I am proud oh I also didn't I forgot to say you're gonna want to iron your fabric first um, uh, because you don't want it to have wrinkles and I kind of forgot that step but my piece was pretty well ironed um, so I'm hoping that it will be okay um, but yeah you're gonna want to iron that first let's just flip this over and see how many wrinkles I'm gonna have oh no it looks fine there are some wrinkles just at the edge I don't even know if you can see them on the camera but um, okay so the next step is to peel off this backing and then iron on the tissue um, I like to let it sit just for a second and cool off because if you peel it too soon that the adhesive is really sort of still liquidy and it will peel off and sort of ooze places so I sort of let it cool off a little bit I think we're there all right so I'm going to peel this off you can sort of see it's shiny and where the light's hitting it so oh thank you Jamie um I did not use steam for this um I I would have if I had ironed my fabric and should have used steam to iron the fabric to get out these wrinkles but for this product um steam will be a no-go it'll I don't I don't exactly know what it'll do but it will ruin it somehow <laughs> I think I've accidentally left the steam on when I've gotten to this part and it um becomes a disaster so yeah no steam thank you for asking that okay and now I'm going to bring up my tissue and I'm going to center it on the fabric and I want to make sure that it is overlapping all of that adhesive because again if your iron hits that adhesive it gets stuck on the iron and then it's going to be on everything else that you iron after that which nobody wants all right so you can sort of see it um, attaching almost immediately I meant to say this earlier when I was describing um, book cloth um, traditionally book cloth is made basically with the same um, concept but it's used with uh, a wheat starch paste that you make first and then and glue up like it's wet and you glue up the fabric and then you put a um, like a Japanese tissue on the back of it which is a great process works fine uh, but I have to make yards and yards and yards of this and I figure in this modern time why not use the modern uh, what we have at our disposal in modern times I think the old-timey book binders if they had had this they would be using it too oh and I forgot to say that the um, the heat and bond is also acid free so everything that I am using today is archival what kind of tissue am I ironing now yes I did say that but I will say it again it is um, it's an acid free tissue that I found on Amazon uh, I just googled or searched for acid free tissue but you can also get it an acid free tissue at the container store um, which is what I was doing for a long time so um, what I'm noticing is something that doesn't happen all that often to be honest but it is sort of puckering on me you can sort of see that there I don't I, I have a feeling it's because I forgot to iron my fabric in the the heat of being on stream on twitch live <laughs> um, So I'm just going to try to get some of those out just by ironing some more. But yeah, I usually don't have this trouble um, when I'm doing my big pieces because I've usually ironed it pretty well. I'm going to go with that and it will be what it will be. 
So there, now we have a piece of fabric that is backed with tissue. You can see that it is, you know, well attached there. Um, and now when we put glue on this, it won't come through the fabric. So I'm going to move on from here and use this to cover some boards. So let me move this out of the way and turn off my iron. When I panic later and say, oh my gosh, did I unplug my iron? You can tell me that I did. <laughs> So now I've got my foot cloth and I'm going to trim it now. And to do that, I'm going to show you a super fancy tool that I made in the makerspace. Um, this is just a piece of acrylic. I think it's maybe a, it's not quite a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. And what I did was I designed it in Illustrator. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. So I, I etched onto this using the laser cutter, um, the traditional, not traditional, um, standard sizes that I use when I'm making my books and photo albums and things. Um, so I can use it as a guide to cut. So then I would use my rotary cutter um, to line it up and you'll see me do that. Um, you can see that I have made many additions over the years with washi tape because I started making different products than I started, than I um, knew I was going to when I made this. Um, so I can't wait to get back into the makerspace at some point and get all of these um, <laughs> measurements into a new uh, acrylic tool. Yeah, and there's a link in the chat to the makerspace um, information. So you too could make something like this. Um, all right, so here's what I'm gonna show you. What am I gonna show you? I'm gonna show you how to cut this down. Again, we are trying to cut it down to something about this size, exactly this size, um, which um, if you recall is uh, 13 and a quarter by six and a quarter. But I have all of that information in this tool. So first, the first thing I'm going to do is trim up my, my fabric. So I'm just going to trim off the edge here and, try and keep it very straight. Because you can see my pattern is, geomet is pretty geometric. So I'm going to want to make sure that it stays straight, lest I have wonky lines in my final product. So I'm just going to trim that off. So I have a clean edge on that side, and then I'm going to need a clean edge on this side. So I'm going to want to trim it up to where the, the bonding happened. Um, so let me get that nice and squared up on the edge. It wasn't quite long enough. Okay, so now I have two clean edges and a square corner. So I can work from here. So I can, I know that I am using this, well, you can't see it, but I swear it says right there, five inch square, and it's this etched line here. So I'm going to line up that edge along my bottom here. And obviously if you wanted your pattern, if your pattern was going in a different direction and you wanted it to be oriented this way, you just need to think about that. But I think I want mine going this way for this pattern. So I'm going to line up this um, etched edge along here and then I'm going to use the rotary cutter to trim that way. And I have all of this left for future projects. And then I'm going to trim it lengthwise and I'm going to use the my 5 inch album 36 page line right here that I have marked with washi tape. Listen, it works. You use what you got to use. Um, but if you're just measuring this again, this is 13 by a quarter. Okay, so now I have my cut piece of fabric. And then if you recall, we need that bridge piece, that middle piece. So I need um, 
to measure this here. Again, I have a line on my cutter that I'm gonna use. Let's see, I want it to be, so I said it needs to be about three inches. It can be, this does not have to be exact, I would say at least three inches to cover that um, 3.6 centimeter spine piece that we have plus extra. Um, I'm gonna give myself a little bit extra. Um, this is a little bit more than three inches. And then I'm going to trim it down to 4.75, which again, I have, I happen to have a line on my cutter for that. So now I have my bridge piece and my full piece. And now I'm going to need to get my boards together. So let me grab those. I wonder where I put them. Here they are. Okay. When in doubt, make a jig. Amen and amen. I love a jig. Um, so here's another place where I've made a jig. I've added these lines along the edge here. Um, and I use that to, I want to jog up my um, five and an eighth inch square boards along there. And then I have my 3.6 piece, 3.6 centimeter piece uh, to go in the middle there. So if you don't have, obviously, this jig, um, anything that you can create a straight edge, um, you're going to want to pull those up together so that you have a nice um, lined up, nice lined up boards. And then I'm going to use some masking tape to hold those in place until we cover them. So I'll just stick that on there. Okay, so now we have our boards. Um, you can see how that's going to eventually become a, um, a photo album. Alrighty. One more thing we need to do before we start covering this, and that is that we want to miter these corners so that when we do our turn-ins, we don't have so much bulk in the corners. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to use my rotary cutter, and I'm going to eyeball this. Um, you can also use scissors to do this. Um, I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna go out about an eighth of an inch away from this corner and I'm gonna cut it at what I'm gonna try to make a 45 degree angle. But I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't always turn out that way and it doesn't really matter. This may shock some of the people in the audience today. I don't know. See, that's not a very good 45 degree angle. It's gonna be fine. We're really just trying to get the bulk out of the corner. So, let me just make sure I'm thinking about all the things uh, before I move on from this. Okay, so I am ready to cover this. And I have everything I need. I've got my two pieces of cloth and I have my end sheets. So that's what I need for that. I'm going to put my rotary cutter away. And what I'm going to use to glue it up is um, a glue called PVA, which is polyvinyl acetate. I'll show you that label too. So this is the kind that I use. Um, do you recommend a rotary cutter over, say, an X-Acto knife or a scalpel? Um, you can certainly use an X-Acto knife or a scalpel in exactly the same way. Um, I just like the rotary cutter for cutting um, fabric, but yeah, um, so I have a scalpel here and I could have easily trimmed it, you know, let me get this back out. I easily could have used that, um, instead of the rotary cutter. So good question. Okay. So back to the PVA. Um, this is what I use. I also get this either at Jerry's or Amazon. Um, it's a neutral pH adhesive, um, and it is, it, it's acid-free, of course, and archival. So I've got that in the very fancy Rubbermaid container. Um, and I just want to show you this. I've got it sort of leaning up at an angle against something so that, um, I have something to roll into that's not um, 
that's dry up here and I can sort of roll instead of just having it all thick at the bottom. And I'm using a foam roller, um, which has seen better days, but listen, if it's still working, I'm still using it. So that's what's gonna, and then I just let it hang over the edge when I'm not using it like that. So I'm gonna bring in some um, scrap paper into the frame. So this bit of scrap paper is, actually it is, it is long enough, but I just wanted to show you this little trick too. If this ended up not being long enough for the piece that I wanted to use, um, I'll just bring in a second piece. And I'll just quickly get a little glue on my brush and just glue those together. Oh, I also got glue on the paper, which is not what you want at all. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit so it doesn't get on my fabric. But anyway, that's how you can sort of extend your um, scrap paper if you need to. So now they won't be, as you work on this, they won't be like moving in different directions and creating problems. All right, that's dry enough. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is glue up this whole piece of fabric and then I'm gonna come over here Glue sure does have a way of going everywhere. I have experienced it endlessly. And then, so this is gonna be glued up. I'm gonna show it to you dry first, because I'm gonna, I'm, once there's glue on this, I'm gonna be moving a little bit quickly. Um, so I've glued that up, I've moved it over here, and then I'm gonna plop this on there. And I'm gonna plop it straight. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of uh, opportunity to wiggle this and make sure that you've got it lined up. Again, I have a pattern where that matters. Maybe you have sort of a scattershot pattern where it doesn't matter so much. Um, but you do want to get it relatively, if not perfectly, square on there. And then I will go to work um, turning, doing the turn-ins for these around the edges. Um, so I'm doing this because I've done this a lot. Um, but I am going to work really fast. Um, this glue is going to start drying as you go. Um, you can always re-wet it. When you, if you get to this point and the glue has dried on you, you can put another layer of glue on it. Or you could do this where you glue up the board, like one board at a time. But see, the way that I've got it taped like this, I really like to do it in one go because all of this is measured and straight already. And if I were to put it three pieces at a time, I would, it would just be another matter of trying to organize it while glue is happening. And as we said, glue goes everywhere. We're trying to minimize mess. So that is the plan. I will walk you through this as I go. I've got my trusty bone folder here. Um, folder made out of bone, which is gonna help me uh, do these turn-ins. Um, so I don't have to use my nails or my fingers and it's gonna get a nice, um, uh, it's gonna stick that down really well. Okay, so let's do it. Let's glue. Okay. So usually I have these set up right next to each other. I have a glue space and then a not glue space, but because I'm trying to keep this in frame for you guys, I'm gonna do it here and then move the paper out of the way. Okay, I'll just show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna glue up my roller. It's pretty glued up. Put that out of the way. And I'm just gonna get glue all over this thing. Move that out of my way. And then I'm gonna stick this on my in frame. Okay. And sorry for my head getting in the way there. I'm just trying to make sure that I am straight. I'm just going to give everything a firm little push. And then I'm going to start um, doing these turn-ins. But I've lost my bone folder. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to start by sort of turning that up around the edge and then pulling it over. 
Most of the time I will do this off the edge of my table and that way I can push with my thumb. Um, but I'm trying to stay in frame for you today, but I wanted to show you that technique. So today I'm just sort of, I'm pushing, I'm pushing with the bone folder as I go so that I'm sort of stretching that fabric tight. Okay, so I've done the two ends and then I'm gonna, what I need to do now is tuck in these little bits of um, fabric edges. Oh, focus for me, come on. Don't you wanna? Well, there we go. Okay, um, so I'm gonna tuck those in and I'm just gonna fold that over and it's gonna make an angle sort of this way. And I don't know if you can see, but there's just a little bit of extra fabric that pushes up right there. And that's okay. I'm just going to sort of push that over and it'll get sucked up into the corner as we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to those um, folded sections that I just did. Um, so I'm just going to tap it with my roller. So like I said, at this point, your um, turn-ins here might be getting a little bit dry, so you can just add a little bit more glue to that if you've taken the time to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the top and bottom, and this is a bit tricky because you see we have these gutter situations here. So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the corners, and I'm sort of pushing extra fabric towards the middle. So you can sort of see I've got a little extra bulge right here. And then I'm going to pinch it right here in the middle. And then we've got the little extra bumps that can suck up into that gutter right there. So I'm just going to really work that in. I see some questions happening in the chat, which I will get to in a moment once I have non-active glue. I could already feel that glue sort of drying, so I'm just gonna give myself a little refresher here. And again, I'm gonna start at the corners and sort of push the fabric towards the middle. And again, I'm usually doing this off the edge of my desk where I've got air underneath me that gives me a little bit more leverage, but for you guys, I'll do it in the middle of my table. All right, so then I'm just going to push that extra bit of fabric up into the gutter like that and make sure that everything gets nice and pressed down. Okay, let's see. Um, how does this process compare to the book binding that happens in the library preservation projects? Yes, and I see Jamie's answering. It's similar to the process, how we build new cases for damaged books. It's true. So um, yeah, so a, a new case for a book would be similar to this, where we'd have a board that's the size of a book, right? And um, then we would attach those two together with a different, it wouldn't be a piece of board, but something else. And then we would cover that more with this, um, this is called buckram. This is that, as I said at the beginning, more boring. <laughs> book cloth, but it's a heck of a lot more sturdy, um, which is what we want for um, the books in the library that are being used um, a lot. So like, especially for textbooks that are getting used a lot, um, we really want to use the heavy duty buckram. Um, so yeah, it's, we, we, this is a lot of what we're doing um, in preservation. Right, Jamie, most of the books we're repairing uh, we try to replicate the original binding and most don't have a rigid spine piece, right? So we want, I don't have any done ones in here to show you, um, but I have something in process. So here happens to be, okay, we're diverging from the photo book, that's okay. Um, this is a recase that I'm doing right now. I've taken off the original covers, and in this case I'm actually going to reuse these boards, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to attach them together using this linen um, stretch linen. So we're sort of similar to what we're doing with the photo book. Um, so I will make that, this space will match the space that needs to go around the spine. 
oops, and then I will create a new spine piece um, around here. A lot of time, most of the time, we just have new board, just like we do we did for this photo book, and um, we would just cover it sort of exactly the way we're doing it now. It is eco-friendly. It is also a factor of being at home <laughs> during a pandemic and needing to use what we have at home without the board shear to cut new boards. So we're doing what we can, man, doing what we can. Okay, back to the photo book. So now we've got, this is now covered. Sorry to just throw that sort of finished looking product at you. Uh, but we need to still finish it on the inside. So now this is all secure. So I'm going to take the masking tape off. And I need to glue this middle piece in. So I want to make sure that the pattern is going in the same direction. Is it? Oh, wait. It doesn't matter because the clumps are going up and down. It doesn't matter. Sometimes um, it matters. So <laughs> you can pay attention to that. So let me bring my um, scrap board back in. Scrap paper. Um, this is shorter than what I've measured before so it fits inside that glue ring. So I still have some clean paper to, to glue this up on. So, so now I get that glued up and pull this up and out of the way. Alrighty. So I'm, what I'm going to do is center it on here top and bottom and left to right and give it a little push in the middle there <laughs> and then I'm gonna again I need to work it into these gutters the space between the boards so I'm just gonna tuck it down beside the board and then push it over come up on the next board and then over again and push that down and again over here and again you really sort of want to be working pretty quickly with this um, as that glue is drying on you. Okay, so now we have our bridge piece done. The last bit is end sheets. Um, excellent. Jamie is fielding bookbinding questions in the chat, which is excellent because my brain is doing something different right now. Um, so let's see. All right, so I've just folded that over so I still have some clean areas where there's not glue to glue this up. Okay, so let me glue this up. And one thing I haven't mentioned up to this point and probably should have is grain direction, both for the um, board and for the paper that I'm using. So everything has a, oops, has a grain shouldn't talk while I'm working. I think it's fine. So you can see that when I glued that up, it wants to turn in a specific direction. That means that the grain is going this way. It means that there's less resistance to it. And that just has to do with the way that the paper was made originally and the way that the grains, literally the fibers of that paper are oriented. Um, so we always want the grain of the board or the paper to be going um, top to bottom of a book. That was not the most opportune time to talk about grain <laughs> while I have wet, wet things happening. Let me grab this and stick it down before I stop, before it dries on me. All right, so I got that stuck down and I'm gonna use my bone folder. You can sort of see where those turn ends are and I'm gonna use the angle of this bone folder to sort of work those really well. And then I'm gonna do the flat part around the edges and in the middle. Okay, so that is a finished, um, uh, finished thing. I'm gonna read those comments in a second. They're distracting me. Um, so now what we want to do is let this dry underweight. Um, and I use this. Um, I use this. I do this about for about two to four hours at minimum, but I usually let it dry overnight. Um, but if I'm in a hurry, um, two to four hours, it'll work. Um, so I'm going to set this aside out of camera view, but I want to show you what I'm doing. Um, I just have some wax paper here that I'm going to plop over the top just in case any glue escaped from the edges around here. And then I'm going to use 
This is just a piece of wood that I got from a piece of furniture that I took apart, <laughs> but it makes a really good um, pressing board. So I'm, I will put that down. Let me get rid of my scrap paper. And then I've got these bricks, and they don't aren't they the fanciest bricks you ever you ever did see? Um, I just wrapped some bricks in a canvas um, so that I don't have to touch the the rough edge of a brick. So I've got three bricks, and I found that to be about sufficient weight. You could also use stacks of books um, if you had some clamps uh, that you could clamp around two pieces of board. That would also work. Um, aren't they the prettiest bricks? <laughs> They make me very happy. At least this one. Those are sort of boring. Um, so I'm gonna set this just like this on a table out of out of picture. Um, but I wanted you to see that. Is that where the holes in the brickyard came from? I'll never tell. Uh, but no. <laughs> I got my bricks at the local hardware store. Okay, we did it. We made a, oh, why is this in my hand? Um, we made a photo album. We just can't do anything with it for hours. Um, okay, let me look in the chat before we move on. Why do books break down usually and has the binding process changed in the past, past few decades? I'm just gonna read Jamie's answers out so it's on record. Uh, significantly, especially with adhesive bound books, paper quality right now is, is great in new books, that's true. The binding not so much that's true um yeah so in this book that i was showing you before this is a sewn a sewn book so they are folded sections just like we're folding sections for this uh binding it has a, a more elaborate sewing structure than what we're doing today um but this is a much better structure for books to have to be sewn together like this um and uh, most modern books are not sewn together. It obviously costs more and whatnot to produce. Um, but so they do, they're, they're primarily a lot now um, adhesive bound books, which are just um, sh stacks of paper glued together at the, at the spine. And it works for a little while until it stops working. Um, <laughs> top tier content. Okay, <laughs> I'll never tell, but no. What's that white strip? Oh, ha 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 ha. Yeah, I probably shouldn't tell you this. Um, it's the tattle tape. This is what sets off the alarms uh, if you try to take this out of the building. <laughs> Shh, it's a secret. Um, so cool, SEW, that's right. Okay, let me put my glue away so that that is not drying out on me. Where are we? Oh, we're not even to an hour. We are speeding through. Okay. okay. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing to see here. All right. So while that photo album is in the oven, <laughs> so to speak, I will pull out one of these that um, is already done. Um, and we are going to roll right into sewing this up. Let me bring back in my paper. Here's my paper and this. All right, so let me fold my paper first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, six sections of three pages each. So let me just split those into their little units here. All right, now I'm gonna fold these in half. And again, I've got the grain direction of this paper going in this way. Um, you want it parallel to the spine of the book. So when we fold that in half, um, you can see that the folded edge is where the spine will be, so we want the grain going this way. Although, if I'm being honest with you, this binding, it doesn't matter so much. And sometimes I fold them cross-grained. 
don't tell anyone. But these I can feel, I can feel that they're, that their grain is going the right direction on, my, on these, so good for me. Oh, let me tell you about that with um, boards. All right, so here's some naked board again. Remember what this is. Um, so this grain, here, let me take this off here. Oops, we're losing some layers. Um, the grain on this one is going this way, at least I think. Yes, because see, I drew a line on it, which um, when it was in a bigger piece, I knew which way the grain was going in that bigger piece. And I made some lines so that when I cut them into squares, and I don't know which direction that's going, I still have some orientation. Um, but I can also, if I didn't have that line, I can sort of feel it. I mean, this is not something that I can um, really send through the camera, but you might be able to tell that this is not folding quite as easily that way as it is this way. Um, so you can feel the direction that that grain is going. So is folding cross grain bad? Um, traditionally, yes, it is very bad. <laughs> very bad. Um, let me say this about it. So if you remember the way that that, fab that um, paper, when I glued it up, rolled in the direction of the grain, um, if you imagine, back to this book, that grain in this paper, uh, and we want it to be going this way, um, it's, hard, it's a hard concept. Um, you want the grain to be moving like this, not like this. You don't want that to be fighting against this binding. And also, we're putting adhesive on this spine, and whenever you put adhesive on paper, it's gonna sort of activate, this is not really a good way of explaining it, um, that grain and you want it to be with the spine. If Jamie or Robin has a better way of explaining that, please go for it. Um, the reason that I say it's not so bad in this binding is because we are taking this piece of paper and we are just sewing it directly into the spine piece. There's no adhesive that's ever touching this paper. Um, so, um, so that's why I say in this particular binding, I don't mind so much if I have cross grain. Um, if I was sewing an actual book and putting adhesive on the spine, it would matter much more. Oh good, it's making sense and sounding good. Perfect. Um, okay, so now I have my six sections of folded paper. Um, give this a little bit more of a fold. Now, we have to go back to the math real fast. I know that's everybody's most favorite part. Um, I just want to talk to you about how I made this um, jig. Um, if you recall, we are doing 0.6 in between. Um, yes, the activation is from the, the water or the moisture that's in the... In the uh, adhesive. Um, so you see that I have six lines. Those represent, well you can, I mean this should be fairly clear, right? Like this is going to be this. Um, and these lines represent where the, um, the thread is going to go. So basically I just want a jig to know where to punch these holes. So you see we're going to punch six holes at the top, six holes in the middle, and six holes at the bottom. And we want them to be very lined up because otherwise our thread is going to be wonky. Um, oh, interesting thought, Jamie, that maybe cross grain may be beneficial in this case. Could be. I'm going to go with it. I did that on purpose. Um, so, but you see that on the edges, I have half of, oh, come on, with the focus. Um, I've got 0.3 are on the edges and then 0.6 throughout. So basically, um, I did that on purpose, vibes, perfect. Um, you can see that, this is hard to explain too, but half of this section is on the outside of the line right here and half of it is on the inside. So I'm only counting 0.3, half of my thickness on the outside, and then there's two halves. They belong to separate sections, but there's two halves in between here. 
So I'm doing six in between here and 0.3 on the edges. Yeah, some archivist. I won't be here in 100 years, so. Meet my problem. <laughs> I will say I care much more about the stuff in my actual job than I do uh, when I'm doing this. I care about it when it matters. Um, and if it doesn't, of course, you can see what's happening now. Um, so I basically just took my ruler and, you know, measured those at the points that I'm talking about. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Um, <laughs> this is why you shouldn't let me talk live. Um, I measured those points in two places and then drew connecting lines. And then these are where we're actually punching. And I did that half an inch in, half an inch in from both ends and then directly in the center. I've also created a punching jig that we're gonna punch the holes in this paper with. And these holes are should be exactly where these are. Um, you'll notice that the, the spine jig is taller than the paper jig. That's of course because we cut the boards an eighth of an inch taller than the paper inside. So, um, yeah. So if that makes any sense. So uh, it's this is sort of a critical step. Um, if you don't get these straight. And in the same place, you're going to have trouble when you start sewing those in together. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is punch my paper. For that, I'm going to need an awl. And if you know where I put that, please let me know. I found it. I found my awl. Um, so this is an awl. Basically, it's the pointy thing with a handle. Um, and it's great. It's a great tool. I love my all. Um, I'm going to put uh, just another piece of binders board um, down beneath me because I'm going to be punching and I would rather not end up with holes in my cutting mat. Um, so what I'm going to do is take each one, line it up exactly, take my all and punch where those lines are. It's pun time. Alls. I'm going to give it my all. Is that, is that the pun you were looking for? I'm giving it my all. There, I said it. All right, so again, you really want this to be lined up. Um, for each one because you want in the end you want a stack of books that have um, or books a stack of paper that have their holes in the same place <laughs> 63 minutes just for the pun It actually took me a, rem a minute to remember what the pun was, if I'm being honest, because I'm thinking about a lot of things at the moment. And I was like, something, the word all was in there. I'll find it. <laughs> no, don't leave. Don't you want to see it finished? Okay, so look, beautifully punched holes in my paper. Yay. Now we need holes to sew these into. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use my uh, template that I made and um, attach it to my board here. So I'm going to attach it on the outside. <laughs> We've seen it all. There it is. I knew there were more. Um, and I'm so I've got what I'm doing is I'm trying to center it on the spine piece, and then I'm going to and um, top to bottom. And then I'm going to clamp that in place. And then I have just a minute. And I don't know if you can tell that these outside boards are sort of squeezing out. So I'm trying to push those in so that I can see um, just the thickness of the board here that's in the middle of the photo album. So I can be sure I'm getting it nice and centered. 
So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to catch it at the top here as well. Um, and I'm doing it on the outside because I'm about to punch through this board and it's going to create um, sort of a, uh, it's going to push through some of that board and it's going to create a little bit of a mound on the other side. And I would prefer that to be on the inside versus the outside. Um, okay, now I'm going to need something to push into because I could just sort of pin prick these into the board, but I really, I need to get sort of down, whoa. I need to get down into the meat of this all a little bit so that these holes are a little bit bigger in the board. So for that purpose, um, I use card cardboard because uh, it gives you some air underneath you to punch into. Um, you can see I've used this a lot. This one I've used quite a lot. Can you imagine how many holes I have punched in my life? Whew. Or oh, are we just making Paul's uh, puns now? Is that what's happening? Okay, well, I'm going to keep making this photo book. So I'm going to put my cardboard on top of my binders board again because I'm still protecting my cutting mat. So, uh, because I'm sure that I have got that clamped. You may not be able to see this um, super well because my hand's going to be over the top. But basically I've got the awl in the palm of my hand. And I'm going to put the tip in each of these intersections and then just push uh, with the palm of my hand through the board. And I'm going to do that 18 times because if you can do six times three, you know that's 18. So you can sort of see those holes are forming. And another thing I want to say is that I want this to be going straight down vertically. I don't want it to sort of be coming out in at an angle. So you really want to be sure that you have got that um, all in position. had to concentrate on that so I got quiet. Ooh, math alert, I know, I keep coming back to it. Listen, I come from a family of accountants. That's what you have to expect from me. Um, so um, I, while I was punching that, I just wanted to remember this, or I wanted to remember to say this. The reason I wanna make sure this is so straight is that if you get this off a little bit, like if it's at an angle, it's gonna affect the trajectory of the paper inside and it's going to send it off at an angle that might end up pushing the paper outside of your cover. So you, I say that from experience, having <laughs> done that. Um, so you really want to keep that nice and straight for that reason. Tips for all accuracy. Um, just one of those things that's hard and you have to learn it. Um, yeah, I think it's a trial and error situation. Um, like I said, you really want to make sure if um, that you're that this is straight when you go in and then just sort of push. Um, but yeah, give it, give it a few um, trial runs uh, before you do it in your nice new photo album. Um, and you'll get the hang of it. It's really, it's not that, it's not that hard. Those are the, those are the main things I wanted to say is straight in. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a pretty good tip. So it's pretty easy to get it lined up directly where you want it in that jig. Okay, so now I've got a cover that has holes in it, even though you can't probably see. Oh, there you can. See if it'll focus. There you go. Look. Holes. I know that's sort of a busy, a busy fabric to see the holes in, but I promise they're there. And we've got our um, paper. Yay! So, it's time to sew. That was almost a pun. I'm going to take a... Um, swig of water here. Okay, so as far as the thread goes, I am using a linen thread, which I also get at um, Talus or Hollanders. Um, those links are pre in the chat from earlier. Um, 
and I like it and it's great and it's very strong. Um, again, for this particular binding, I don't know if you need to use this kind of this strength of thread um, just because there's not so much tension happening at each of these. Um, there's not so many stress points as there are in a normal book, um, which is when you really want to use the linen thread. So I would say if you use the thick embroidery floss for this, I think you're going to be okay. Um, but I did want to tell you what the the real deal uh, book binder thread is, and that's 100% uh, linen thread. All right, so I'm going to use a black thread because just so you can sort of see it better on camera. Um, it comes in different... Uh, a couple of different colors. I wish that the spectrum was a little greater. Um, I have also in the past taken um, a white thread and um, tried to dye it with writ dye and that worked okay. I don't know if it was um, worth it in the end. So now I basically now just pick um, patterns that go with the thread that's available so I don't have to do that part. Um, okay let me get my so this is uh, a bag weight. It's, um, it is just a sewn bit of fabric with lead shot in it. Um, and I have a needle. I should probably have some details for you about this needle, but I do not. <laughs> it's a thicker needle than, you know, a traditional sewing needle, but it's not quite as big as a yarn needle. Um, and uh, probably if you go to Talus or Hollanders, they will have they will be able to tell you, based on their products, what is a good sewing needle. I'm very sorry that I don't have specifics on that one. Um, yeah. Okay, what else am I going to need? I'm going to need some scissors. And here comes some more bricks. So usually I, again, do this off the edge of my table so that... Um, I can be sewing sort of into air. Um, are they sharp or blunt? Robin says they're, yeah, blunt-ish. I mean, it'll still draw blood, I'll be honest with you, but um, it's probably not as sharp as some other needles need to be. It's really not focusing that hard, that well. Um, yeah. Yeah, they don't need to poke as much since the holes are already made exactly. Okay, so I've got I've got a piece of binders board up on these bricks so that I can have some room below. But again, you can just do this off the edge of a table. So I'm going to take my bag weight and just put it on the on the board so that it stays in place. And I want the spine off the edge of the board. Um, all right, I'm going to sit for this. Okay, get in position. Alrighty, so. Um, each section needs two lengths of thread and I'm going to, I'm going to sew, um, I mean, I'm going to pull enough for three at a time. So I'm pulling six lengths of thread and that way I only have to thread my needle once for three of them. Um, but more than that, and it starts to be kind of an unwieldy amount of, of thread. I'm also going to bring in this. <laughs> which looks really gross, but it's a piece of um, beeswax. And um, so I'm gonna run my thread through the beeswax a couple of times. Um, this sort of helps add a little bit of strength to the, to the thread, but it also keeps it from um, winding up on you while you're using it. Um, so it'll keep it nice and, not nice, it'll keep it straighter than it would if you didn't do that. All right, so I'm going to thread my needle. And here's hoping that goes well. It did. And I'm just going to pull a good amount through. I've got more, uh, probably about, I pulled through about half the length um, and left the rest. Okay, so I've got my paper here. Um, one thing that I mentioned, this is not necessary, but I think it's a good practice, is to, like these, I know for sure that these pages fit together this way and they technically should if I were to flip this fit um, this way um, but just in case there's any variance in the jig that I made 
um, I want to make sure that I keep these in the same order going in here as they are here. So either you want to take straight from the top and put it in like this, or you want to take from the top and flip every single one. My uh, preference is to take it and flip it. So you'll be seeing me do that. So I will flip every single one of those. Um, okay, so I like to just not in the book, go ahead and insert the needle into that middle hole. And then we're going to go into the bottom most middle hole in the spine. And I'm going to push that through. And I'm going to leave myself a tail, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches. And I'm going to come over to the bottom most, or yeah, the bottom most rightmost hole in the spine. And come through. You keep yeah, I come through and then I'm going to find the hole that I've punched in the paper and come in from the outside of the fold. See that coming in there. Then I'm going to jump all the way up to the top and come through in the bottom most leftmost hole and come through there. And that's been pretty easy. And it still is, but here's the tricky bit. We're going to go back into the same hole that we started from, and you just want to be sure that you don't accidentally split the thread that's currently there. You don't want your needle to go into the thread. So you want to make sure that it's sort of just beside the original thread. So I'm going to come through the board, and it's not. it doesn't matter if this is tight yet. Sorry about the focusing issue. Um, it doesn't matter if this is tight yet, so I'm going to come through the board till I see my needle and then go into the paper. Now, what I want to say about this is you've got your tail. It's on this bottom. It's below the thread that's in the middle, and I'm going to send my needle now onto the opposite side of this horizontal line so that my two tails end up on opposite sides of this middle bit. It's hard for me to explain that, but I think that probably made sense. Okay, at this point, I want to tighten everything. This one is coming from over here, so I'm going to pull it straight this way. If I were to tighten it this way, you can imagine that you're putting stress on that hole. Um, and in this case, this board would probably hold it, but another good practice is just to pull it in the opposite direction that it's coming from. And the same with this one. This one is going in this way on the outside, so I want to pull it to the left. So I've tightened those up, and now I'm just going to make um, a double knot in the middle. Oh, I see Robin. Thank you for giving some good all um, tips in the chat. All right, so then I'm just going to trim both of those to about a I don't know, a quarter to a half inch. And you can see I still have a perfectly um, threaded needle. So I can do the next one. So again, I'm going to flip mine from the stack and go into the middle hole here. And then go up to the next top, the next uh, hole up in the spine. Leaving a tail. Coming in from the outside, coming in, find, and then finding my hole here, if I can. Jumping up to the top. Isn't it fun? It's so simple, but it has a big impact. And again, I'm going to come into the middle hole, trying not to split my thread, come into the paper. I want to push this onto the opposite side of the middle thread there. Just stick my little needle in my bag weight. That's a handy place to put it. Again, I'm going to tighten in opposite directions. And then I'm going to tie a double knot in the middle. And give it a trim. So you can start to see I've got two, two of the lines on the outside now. Flipping my paper. Needle in the middle hole. And then out the 
spine piece. And you see I'm sort of I sort of hold that middle thread when I pull this way so that I make sure that my I don't pull the thread out on myself. Although that still happens, which is annoying when it does. Finding the middle. Okay, now I'm done with this thread, so I took the needle off. I'm gonna tighten everything up, give it a good. Do you use different thread colors of different fabrics for different fabrics? I do. So depending on what the pattern sort of calls for, um, I will use a different, like for this one, I use the white thread. And actually for this one, I usually use the white thread, but I wanted to use the black so you could see it better. Um, do I have other examples? I do. So here's sort of a more green pattern. Um, that I use the green thread for. So you can really sort of have fun with that. And you could you could make it much more contrasty. Like I sort of I just I sort of lean towards more matchy, but if you wanted to do something bold and vibrant, you know, if you wanted to do like a bright blue on this or something, or a red on that green one, that would be fun. Alright, I'm gonna take I get a second uh, length of thread, so I need six lengths. Let me trim that off. Again, I'm going to run it through my uh, beeswax that I have here. I usually do that twice. Pray for a good threading. Come on, you can do it. All right, I'm going to try the other end. That one sort of went wonky. I jinxed myself by asking for a good threading. Sometimes I'll just sort of um, run the end on this beeswax to sort of um, strengthen uh, the end of the thread. Oh, come on. All right, let's just start with a fresh, fresh end. We did it, yay. Okay, three more to go. And then we have a finished photo album. Again, I'm gonna flip my paper. Needle through the middle hole and then through the spine. Sometimes you got to give it a little wiggle to get sort of the bulk of that double thread um, through these holes that you've punched. But again, because we punched into that um, cardboard and we got sort of, we sunk deeper into the thicker part of the awl, um, you should have uh, pretty good sized holes in your board. But sometimes if you don't, if you just sort of move your needle in a circular fashion, you can sort of expand it a little bit. <laughs> they do make needle threaders. Maybe I should get one of those. Pull that tight. Pull that tight. And you really want to make sure this is pulled very tight so that this is right up against the board. If there's any wiggle room, you're going to have um, some issues. I have spent many, many hours doing this motion, sitting in front of the TV. Many Netflix shows watched and binged and finished and started over 
while binding books. Okay, last one. Almost there. Uh, streaming recommendations. Oh, see, you're going to put me on the spot right after I said I watched so many shows, and now I'm not going to be able to think of any. Oh, I will say I just finished, I think it was called Blown Away, which is like British Bake Off, but glass blowing. Um, that's on Netflix. That was very interesting. And there's also one, I think it's on HBO, that's for pottery. So it's basically a pottery competition. And that was very fun to learn about. I don't really, I've you know, I know vagaries about pottery, but it was interesting to learn um, sort of the ins and outs of how pottery works. And glass blowing, I just can't even imagine. That's, whew, that is something. And it looks really, really hot. And I don't like being hot. So I will probably not be glass blowing in the future. Okay, look, photo book, just like that. Like I said, the sewing on that is pretty easy. <laughs> Very competitive. I'm not competitive at all. Well, that's not true. Um, yeah, we did it. Just like that. Um, so, yeah, this is ready for pictures, if you had any, which I do. Um, let me bring one over, and I will. let me give you some... The, ways, the way that I like to use um, photo corners, because if you'll remember, this is just drawing paper, so there's no sleeve or anything anywhere to put um, your photograph. So let me do this in the middle where it's a little bit flatter. Um, I'm gonna put that there so it'll hold. Let me get my photo corners. <clears throat> Okay, so the way I like to do this, any more of those good Jamie photos? Here's a good Jamie photo. Um, it, this tree really is amazing. This is the one that's just beside um, B.H. Hill. And I wish it would focus because it's amazing. But it's got that, oh, it is focusing. I just, I sometimes I just stop and look at that tree and it is mind blowing how giant and sturdy it is. Anyway, distracted by the tree. Okay, so what I like to do is put the picture on the page where you want it to be. And I'm going to put a little bit of weight on it. If you had a, um, a paperweight or something, that would be good. And then from there, I'm going to peel off these photo corners one at a time and come in and without disturbing the, the placement of that photo, um, you can plop that onto the corner and then press it down. I just find that's a good way to get it exactly where you want it without too much trouble. Yeah, this does take a little bit of practice. And I haven't looked into it, but I would imagine that somewhere you could buy photo sleeves that are folded um, and then sew those into a book and then you would have photo sleeves, but I haven't actually looked to see if I could find any. Um, but really you just need something folded um, to sew through. Um, and then you'll be good. So yay! Those are all, that's everything I have to show you today. Um, yeah, that's pretty exciting. I've never shared that before. Yeah, yeah, you might need to give it a couple of goes, but this, that's a little bit forgiving. If you haven't pushed it down too hard, you can probably, um, move it a little bit. Okay, well, I think, unless there are any more questions, 
um, I think that's all I have to show you. Thank you for um, watching with me and um, being interested in the process of letting me talk about books because I sure do like them. Um, all right, so I'm going to end here and um, look look ahead. There's going to be a couple of more uh, streams from my uh, co-workers, Robin and Jamie, who are with me in the chat. They're coming up soon um, on the live stream, so keep a lookout for that. Um, they will be touring our lab and doing some other fun uh, uh, craft and bookbinding or something. I'm not sure what Robin's doing yet, but that's coming. All right, so everybody, I hope you have a good afternoon, and um, thanks for watching.